Do you know why it's so difficult to wrap one of these, a sphere? Well, it's a really interesting question and it has a lot to do with how we make maps. We're trying to take a flat piece of paper and we're trying to lay it on the surface of the globe. So we're wrapping the globe. Whilst cartographers are unwrapping the globe, so they're trying to peel off the surface of the globe and lay it flat on a piece of paper. So they're doing exactly the opposite of what we're doing. But if you look at the atlases, you'll see that all of the countries are distorted in some way. Oh look, an atlas. This equal area projection map has tried to keep the areas of the country the same. And in keeping the areas of the countries the same, had to seriously change their shape. Greenland looks positively fat, and the rest of Europe and a lot of the Northern Hemisphere is quite chubby looking. So there's another projection called the Mercator projection, which tries to avoid changing the shape of the countries. But then it has the problem that the country's size becomes massively different. So Greenland looks huge on the Mercator projection. So what these map makers are doing is they're peeling off the surface of the Earth. But in order to get it to lay flat on a piece of paper, they're stretching it in places. It's like a rubber sheet. We could do the same if we wanted to wrap the globe. So we just take a piece of rubber and we're going to stretch it over the surface. And then we'll get that rubber to lay flat on the surface. But if we're not using rubber and if we're using actual wrapping paper, which we can't stretch, then we run into the same problem that the map makers run into. If we were able to lay this piece of paper flat on the globe, and then we drew the countries onto this piece of paper. So we traced around Africa and we traced around England. And then once we unwrapped our globe and looked at the piece of paper that we had, we'd have a flat representation of the Earth where all the countries were the right size and all the countries were the right shape. But clearly it's more difficult than that because so far no one's been able to produce a map that has accurately represented the globe. And it's not just difficult, actually it's impossible. And the reason is Gauss's theorem Egregi, or Gauss's wonderful theorem. Gauss's theorem says that because the surface of the earth is curved, and because flat, the paper is flat, I can't produce an accurate map of the globe on a flat piece of paper. And so you can see that it's also say, telling us that we can't wrap a sphere with a flat piece of paper. What Gauss had in mind when he was talking about curvature wasn't what we might immediately think of when we think about curvature. Because this cylinder has the same curvature as this flat piece of paper. And I can prove it thus by wrapping it. There we go. So we have the wrapping paper laying flat along the surface. The fact that we can get the wrapping paper to lay flat means we've been able to produce a perfect map of the cylinder's surface. So why can we do this with a cylinder and not with a sphere? Well, that's got to do with Gauss's definition of curvature. It's actually called Gaussian curvature. So if we think about the Gaussian curvature of a piece of paper, we need to draw two curves along the surface. And we draw them perpendicularly. So I'm going to draw one curve along here and one curve along here. Now what you'll notice about these curves is, well, they're not very curvy, they're straight lines. And so a curve which is a straight line has zero curvature. This line has zero curvature and this line has zero curvature. In order to find out the curvature of the surface, we have to multiply the curvature of the two lines together. So zero times zero, and that gives us zero. So a flat piece of paper has zero curvature. Well, that's, that's great. But what about a cylinder? If we draw our two perpendicular lines on the surface, so one going over here and one going along here, you can see that this line is curved. It's curving around the surface of the cylinder. It's curving towards the centre of the cylinder, if we look down its axis. And so we say it has positive curvature. But this line that lies across the top of the cylinder it's just a straight line again. It's exactly the same as the ones we were drawing on a piece of paper. So this has zero curvature. So we're multiplying a positive number with a number that equals zero. And we're going to get zero back again. So the cylinder has zero curvature, just the same as the flat piece of paper. And that's why we can wrap a cylinder. Or if 
we happen to live on a cylindrical world, why our cartographers would be so happy. So if we draw a line over the surface, let's draw one along the equator and one along a line of longitude. You can see that both these lines look exactly the same as the lines we drew on the cylinder. This one is curving in towards the centre of the Earth, and so it's a positive curvature. This one is also curving in towards the centre of the Earth, and so it's also a positive curvature. So we have two positive curvature lines, and when we multiply a positive number by a positive number, we get back a positive number. And because it's different, Gauss says that the cartographers who are trying to get the surface of the globe to lay flat on a piece of paper can't do it. And we, we're trying to get our paper to lay flat on the surface of the globe, can't do it either. So, that's why it's so difficult to write spherical distance. I don't want to be really associated with this terrible wrapping. I would make a better attempt if this was really someone's present.